All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for clicking on our link. Uh, Team 21 conducted their project one on Toyota Motor Company. We conducted a review and assessment of their product and their production line. I'd like to take time to introduce my team, Adam uh, Wexler, Kasim Kaba, Julian Weckering, and myself, Jesse Vieira. Stay tuned. All right, when it comes to the history of Toyota, it begins in 1926 with the Toyota Automatic Loom Works. Their looms were about 20 times faster than the competition. The company was very successful. Seven years later, the son of the founder uh, began automobile development, a pretty big departure from looms. Uh, they were pretty successful developing small sized cars to the point where they were successful enough on Australia that they had reason to begin fully assembling them there in 1968. The cars weren't that popular in America in the 40s and 50s. Americans liked their bigger cars, uh, but that began to change in the 70s, and part of that was helped by the oil crisis, where having a smaller, more fuel-efficient car uh, was more affordable. Uh, now, uh, it got to a point then in uh, about 1986 that we began fully assembling cars in the United States. The first car off the assembly line was a white Corolla FX16. And uh, part of that was uh, encouraged from import tariffs that began in the 1960s. In the 1980s, Toyota began developing luxury cars with the Lexus. In the 1990s, they began developing SUVs and hybrid cars, a very popular Prius hybrid. And then in the 2000s, they began developing fully electric cars and hydrogen fuel cell uh, vehicles as well. Uh, those are not as popular uh, and are usually just sold in small quantities for uh, private fleets. Toyota is responsible for one of the biggest contributions in automotive history. This is lean manufacturing processes. These lean manufacturing processes um, range from quality control all the way to the way they buy from suppliers and the amount they buy. To, um, the person responsible for the biggest contribution by Toyota to the automotive um, industry is Taiichi Oano. The reason for this is that he came up with the idea of um, introducing a pull system instead of a push system in, the, in automotive production. A pull system requires customers to order, then builds to, to meet the requirements of the order, versus a push system which is their production nonstop and then they try to sell the vehicles. Tachiano started, the reason he started this was because um, Toyota did not have the money to afford the American way of making things back in the 1950s, which was the push system. And Toyota was a brand new company, was struggling, there was the f a fall in the market, just like um, my colleague said. And this led um, Taiichi to introduce many things, as in for quality control, he got rid of the quality staff. Instead, he and every single um, employee was a quality was a quality control expert because on every single assembly line location there was a button which they would press, stop the assembly, and they would come inspect the quality. And this would this actually improved this actually reduced the biggest contribution by Taiichi Oano to the to Toyota was the Kanban system, which is an evolution of the pull system. This Kanban system requires an employee to have a signal card for, and each, each single step of the process, each um, employee has a signal card, which when they're finished, they would hand over to the next. And if they need more supplies, they would bring it to the supplier and it would fill the exact amount on that Kanban card. Their Kanban is, is also includes the quality control and everything else to actually oh, no, um, introduce it to, the, to Toyota. There are six rules to the Kanban system. These six rules are, do not send um, de defective product to a secret process. Um, sub subsequent process come to withdraw only what is needed. Produce only the exact quantity that was withdrawn by the subsequent process. Leave the production. And Kanban is a meaning of fine tuning, which means Kanban is always an evolution. That's why a lot of people um, refer to it as TPS, or Toyota Production System. And the last rule is stabilize and rationalize the process. Thank you. Toyota veered off a little bit from the automobile manufacturing when they got into the Toyota Research Institute. 
That was a $1 billion institute founded here in the United States. Uh, that was announced a little over a year ago in November of 2015. The institute has two primary focuses, and that is artificial intelligence and robotics. The two main campuses are located at Stanford and MIT. At Stanford, it's at their artificial intelligence lab, and at MIT, it's at their computer science and artificial intelligence laboratory. Now, with respect to the artificial intelligence, Toyota is concerned with developing safer driving, but not fully autonomous driving like Google and Uber are working towards. Uh, for example, at Stanford, they're working on machine learning so that vehicles are more easily able to deal with hazards that they've never seen before or are not programmed to deal with, while at MIT, they're developing uh, ways for the autonomous system to communicate to the driver and uh, justify its actions. Uh, with respect to the robotics, uh, they are involved in manufacturing and elderly assistance. As far as manufacturing goes, they're interested in, in incorporating artificial intelligence to the manufacturing, and uh, that is to improve their manufacturing beyond what uh, Julian had talked about in the earlier slides. Uh, J Japan also, with respect to elderly assistance, Japan has an aging population, and uh, uh, assisted living can be expensive and it's also a very difficult decision to make. And that's not something that's only endemic to Japan, it is also a, uh, a situation that we deal with here in the U.S. As a matter of fact, uh, Gil Pratt, who is the CEO of the Toyota Research Institute, uh, at the announcement of TRI, talked about uh, his own uh, situation dealing with assisted living with his father. And you can see uh, Gil Pratt right there at the announcement for TRI. Uh, it should be noted also that uh, Toyota is not the first company to uh, become experts in developing a machine and then branch out into also becoming a successful software developer. A lot of machines these days do have a layer of software involved and so uh, you know, uh, many companies are also developing softwares as well such as GE. So the video being presented now is a concept by Toyota on their pre-collision detection system. So now I'd like to briefly go over Toyota's return on sales, specifically their gross profit margin, which is an important metric whenever you're measuring a company's financial health and solvency. Uh, as you can see, they're all above 10%, which is the industry average, so that's impressive. Also, their net profit margins are well uh, within the range in being a competition with the industry average. Now the above slide is their current income statement for the last three years. Um, the important figure to see here are their, their gross profit. Uh, Toyota currently leads the way in uh, manufacturers that create the most profit per vehicle. Can I? Artificial intelligence is a term coined by uh, John McCarthy, an American computer scientist in 1956. Um, and the whole purpose of this concept is to make human life easier uh, with the interaction with our, in our daily lives. Um, but the main question is, does it actually does the purpose why, why it's intended for? Artificial intelligence, or otherwise known as AI, um, has many pros and cons. And as you can see here, some of its um, greater assets and greater uh, good that it brings to the table is uh, much more precision and accuracy. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's much more time efficient compared to human uh, components. Uh, it reduces fraud and it also removes the human component uh, when it comes to uh, danger in, in real life situations. But on the other hand, some of the cons that it comes with is the cost that, it, that we incur and the repair um, uh, cost that comes with it. 
Um, it, it, it also in, um, creates a lot of unemployment uh, for traditional jobs that were uh, previously done by humans versus now machines uh, currently do them. Um, it also uh, removes the human component out of the equation and that's something that customers uh, actually feel on a daily basis and it lacks the human touch which means that it's a concern for people and they often are reluctant to give their whole full trust to machine to take care of uh, uh, them while they, they don't have any control over the product. Thank you for listening to our Team 21's presentation about Toyota Motor Corporation. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it in the YouTube comment section and we'll try our best to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. Have a great day.